Ohio. In 2012, I was attending the World Economic Forum's annual meeting for the very first time. I was asked a simple question. At the time, I didn't know this question was going to change my perspective on life, for it was a simple question. Whose wife are you? I was prepared to be at Davos around top executives and academics and politicians. I was ready to talk about topics from sustainability to economics and business. But I had not prepared myself for the feeling of what it was like to be in a minority. Because you see, when I got there, I was one of the mere 15% of female delegates. The numbers look different in the evenings, actually. A lot of people attended and brought their spouses to the events. And when I was asked the question multiple times, what I realized is as a woman, they saw me first as a spouse and not as a delegate. Those four simple words, whose wife are you, stuck with me as I came down the mountain and back into my role as CEO of North America of a top four public relations firm. But I gotta tell you, the passion rose and I was really kind of pissed and frustrated. And I penned a blog post entitled, I am not a wife, I am a CEO. If I was going to do this at this point, the CEO was going to be my major. But I made a decision right then that I needed to declare a minor. And my minor became the goal to champion gender equity in business. For you see, at this time, my children were going through their choices. My son was in college and my daughter looking at schools. And it made me think back to that moment. How did I choose my major in communications and my minor in psychology? Why do people choose a minor? So I do what we do in my field, and I asked our agency to do some research. And we went out and we talked to a network of undergraduates. And what they told us is actually 30% were required to do a minor. But what was the most interesting part of it is 80% of them actually said they were going to pursue a minor. So I asked them why. And what they said was they thought it would look good on their resume, that it would help them get a job. We then asked adults the same question. We did an omnibus survey of 1,100 US adults. And they said something a little bit differently. What they said is 40% of them actually got a minor. But what they felt like is the majority made them feel more well-rounded. And only a third said it actually helped them in their career. We then asked that same group another series of questions. And we asked them what they thought about the idea of declaring a life minor. We defined a life minor as something that went beyond career and family. And when we asked them that question, interestingly, 88% said they thought it was important to declare a life minor. Of that, 63% said they thought it would make them feel more well-rounded. And almost 50% said it would fill a void that their career could not. So at this point, I thought I was on to something. So I started to look at people that actually had majors but also had successful minors. And I found a lot. It was actually pretty easy. And I'm going to share a few. An example of an actress, an insurance agent, and an athlete. So let's start with one you all know, Gwyneth Paltrow. You know her as an actress. But she declared a minor as a lifestyle guru. In fact, she started Goop, which was a newsletter, at her kitchen table. She started it without any fanfare, no press release. It gained through word of mouth and earned media. And she started it to leave a legacy for her children. But it actually then turned into a brand and a website. And if you asked her now, 
is she a businesswoman or an actress? She actually told the New York Times she didn't really think she had to choose. The next example, I'm going to take you back to the 1900s and introduce some of you to Wallace Stevens. Wallace Stevens spent 40 years as an insurance agent. In the middle of his career, he decided to pursue his passion in poetry. In 1955, he won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry, his major and his minor flourishing together. He was then asked by Harvard to be a faculty member. And guess what he said? No thanks, I'm a vice president at the Hartford. So majors and minors sometimes can be very different. His were as different as night and day. So let's get back to our survey for a minute. When we asked adults about their life minors, 57% said that it provided a creative outlet. But second to that, 50% said it allows you to tackle a cause or a societal issue. So the next example is someone else you'll know, Billie Jean King. I was lucky enough to meet Billie Jean King early in my career when I worked on a brand that sponsored her programs. If you know Billie Jean King, you know she's as much an advocate for tennis as she is for female athletes and their equality. What you might not remember is after she won the US Open, the next year she threatened to boycott it. Why? Because they did not have equal pay. And in fact, it became the first tournament to pay men and women equally. Billie Jean King actually won the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her work in this area. Billie Jean King was a great influence on me. I came down the mountain from Davos, and I knew I had to do something in my own environment, and I declared that minor. So what you might expect, that blog post got a little bit of attention, and I just started, decided to start a panel series in my own agency on women's leadership. That was then scaled to over 200 agencies in our holding company. It led to a board created to help women gain senior level executive positions in those agencies. It then made me decide to add our own national head of diversity and inclusion. And guess what happened? Diversity increased. And of those men and women in those 200 agencies, there was a renewed commitment to that cause. I also started on the speaking circuit, and I spoke from the United Nations to the Women in Agribusiness Conference to Yes This Year, back to Davos, where guess what I spoke on? That's right, gender bias. So you might be thinking right now, what's my minor? Or how do I declare a minor? Going back to that research, 60% of our people actually said that they feel like they have a passion beyond career and family. Of those that didn't pursue it, there were three reasons. One, I'm not sure I have the time. Two, I'm worried about the financial commitment. And three, I just don't know where to start. When I started talking to people about their minors, it was actually very simple. They started with an idea. Something happened in their lives and they wanted to champion a cause, or they just had an intellectual curiosity that they wanted to pursue and dig deeper in. I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. Next time you're at a dinner party, instead of asking people what their major is or what their career is, Ask them what their minor is. When I did this recently at a dinner party, I heard a lot of things. I heard one friend tell me about her interest in Broadway and that she was working on a community theater. My other friend told me about her fundraising for heart health. And the third about her mother who was writing haikus and she was pursuing the same passion. 
And guess what happened? The energy rose around the table. Because when you add extra passion, it doesn't sap you of energy. It gives you more. So for me, I was able to fuse my minor into my life. And it's made my life more fulfilling. I've made change for my daughter, for my peers. But more importantly, I've made change for myself. This unleashed passion and this simple act allowed me to have more swagger and confidence. It helped me build a greater network. And it also helped me to combine my soul with my work. So I'm going to leave you with one thought. Listen for your moment. And be open to declaring a minor any time in your life. I declared a minor, and it truly allowed me to embrace all of my roles as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, as a sister, and not or as a CEO. Thank you.